Okay, uh, South Africa with back to back finals. Um, but are, are New Zealand maybe the favourites? Um, Charlie, if I come to you first, based on what they've done the last couple of weeks? Yes, I think so. I haven't looked at what the bookies are saying. I don't know if they are, are genuine favourites, but I would have I would have uh, New Zealand as favourites. I think that they will win. I think that the last two weekends will have taken so much out of South Africa. I think it's a massive, massive ask for them to go again against that calibre of opposition. Um, and New Zealand have been just building very, very steadily. If you think about their Nadir, their rock bottom was that warm-up against South Africa at Twickenham, where they were obliterated, their heaviest ever loss to South Africa. Um and since then, it's just been steady improvement after steady improvement. Even in that the France game, I know they lost, but for 40, 50 minutes, they were they, they looked arguably the better side and looked like they were going to go on and win. And then since then, it's just been onward, upwards and onwards and that de- demolition of Italy, um, that you know miraculous victory really against Ireland where they were phenomenal. Um, and then they've had an extra day's rest heading into the final. They haven't, they didn't play as strenuous a test against in their semi final on Friday night as as South Africa did on on Saturday against England. Uh, yeah, I think they have to be favourites. I think that they will cope. They will cope better with the bomb squad and South Africa's physicality as well. It, I guess if there's one area that might worry you slightly, if you're an All Blacks fan, it, it's going to be the scrum and just whether New Zealand's props can sort of handle what South Africa have been dishing out over the last couple of weeks. I mean, I don't love the idea of, from an All Blacks fan, of, of Ox and Jay against Fletcher Newell in the in the second half late on at Paris. That feels like a, a scrum mismatch and maybe that will um, maybe that will force Foster's hand and maybe maybe he might go in another way and have Ofer Tungu Fassi on the bench instead. I, I think that's going to be where that's going to be where South Africa hope that they can they can make some ground. I don't necessarily think it will happen um, on Tamiati Williams' side up against kind of friends of mine, and Vincent Cock, because I think he's quite a good scrummager. But but yeah, I, I, the the interior Fletcher Newell potential matchup does worry me slightly. So, sorry, not to be hypercritical of England, but certainly where New Zealand can, can, can sort of take hope is that England really should, by the time... Ox and, and, and Vincent Cock came on and, and started doing their thing. England should have really have been further in front from from the dominance that they had and, and, and the way that the game had gone. New Zealand will be probably saying the same in that we, we could go out and blow them away first half, a bit like England did, blow them away in the start of the second half. And the game could be gone by the time by the time the, the bomb squad comes on. And really, with England, you're looking at one more penalty, one more drop goal, um, and that probably would have been the case in the semi-final as well. So I think New Zealand will think, will fancy themselves as a better side than England. They could come out the, the box play quite a limited conservative game plan. Although they do move the ball wider, you you know normally now they didn't last weekend. Um, and I think they they'd back themselves to sting them and, and make and take you know sort of n- neutralize the threat of 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 that bomb squad in the, in that way rather than addressing it directly. Yeah. Charlie, what are South Africa going to do with... There's some selection decisions they kind of need to make, don't they? Because they hooked Manny Libbock on 31 minutes. Damien Willemser was off pretty early in the in the second half. It just felt like they weren't... They didn't have any control of the of the kicking game and that they were making basic errors. Would you start Pollard and and, um, and the current uh, crowd favourite in England, Philly LaRue, after his antics at the final whistle? Would you start both of them? Definitely start off after Clerk. I'm not sure the other two. The other two, I'm not sure. Damn it! Really, really interestingly, Damian Valenza. The last time he w- he looked that ruffled in a game was was when New Zealand um, completely well. Well, well, New Zealand sort of delivered the template on how to play against South Africa in in Auckland in July by kicking a lot off ten, um, finding Valenza, isolating I- isolating Valenza and Mapimpi and and those guys in the back in the back three and and winning the scraps because where they are, Charles kind of hinted at it there, where they are, where they have another dimension to to England is they they can probably be just as accurate with and just as kind of teasing with that kicking game with Moanga and Bowden Barrett and Geordie Barrett. Um, but what they have off the back of that is when they are winning those loose balls back, they'll have the confidence and the ability to spread the ball to space off the back of that and score tries rather than just rely on going three three three. So it's it's they're they're a huge they're a huge. Um, I thought I thought 
de Klerk actually I spoke to him afterwards and said what was your what were the specifics behind your role and he said which really kind of surprised me he said body language because actually and that it was really funny they if you picked up after the game they were desperate to sort of to sort of give the impression that self-belief had never wavered but Faf de Klerk sort of admitted yeah uh self-belief was sort of in danger of it's not all okay always the case but in danger of wavering a little bit and you're like yeah i that seems to be the case he was very calm i think i would start pollard yet yeah, um because going going three six nine for south africa is going to be very important larue jury's out still 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 unsure i think valenza valenza gives you that little bit He's, he's, he's still got spark there. Um, and I think maybe in harness with Pollard, that might that might still be valuable. But I think I think Valencia was disastrous in that rain. Like he was absolutely all over the shop. I don't I don't think I don't think they can take that risk again. I, I think I'd I'd start LaRue, definitely. I think Valencia, England completely rattled him. He looked absolutely all over the shop. I thought he was Sorry, I think I thought he was the worst player on the pitch, frankly. And I thought I thought I was I was surprised that they didn't hook him at the same time as as Liburg and bring Pollard and Larue on together because I think they were both. I think I think to be honest, I think I think Vilamsa looked more lost than 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 Liburg, But I know obviously fly half is more of a sort of integral position, so I can understand why they did it. Um, and yeah, I mean I, I think there's a chance that Visa comes back in. That that's where Visa comes back in just for a bit more physicality. He hasn't played the last two matches, so he'll be fresh and raring to go. And they did look, they did look a bit overawed and overwhelmed physically. South Africa, didn't they? And that's one thing that Visa brings you. He potentially isn't as much of a um, sort of cerebral rugby player as uh, as Dwayne Vermeulen, but he he brings that sort of visceral edge that you that you perhaps want in a one-off game like this. I can't see them going unchanged again. I think that they might see that as a bit of a you know that they've got away with one there. They've got out of jail free. I think that that might have been a mistake going unchanged between France and England. I think that's a good point. I'd be up for Vili Daru starting, if only to keep himself in the mix for player of the tournament and justify my prediction, which um, looks like a bit of a damp squib at the minute. Sure. Oh well, I, you say that, Charlie, but I was actually going to big you up a bit because you're the you're the only person left in the game for um, World Cup winner and player of the tournament. I mean, the Vili Daru. Scores about four tries and he's named player of the match. And I mean, you might walk home with the uh, with the whole back. So congratulations in a way. Um, yeah, that would be that would be quite something. Um, we've got to mention Wayne Barnes actually, who we can now confirm officially after Charlie broke the story on Sunday is going to be the referee for the World Cup final, first time in his career. Pro- are we are we thinking he probably would have been? Or maybe it would have been four years ago had England not shot New Zealand and got to the final. But and we was because we were sort of laughing about the prospect of this kind of England team who've, who've had to sort themselves out in a hurry, squeaking into the final and potentially denying Barnes another shot at the big game. But he, but that's not going to happen. He's there and he's going to get it, which feels like a, a justified reward for a, a very fine referee, doesn't it, Charles? Uh, absolutely. It seems mad that he was refereeing a quarter final in 2007 and now in 2023, 16 years on, this is his first final. But yeah, no, really well deserved. You know, I, I, w- I will be honest, I thought that maybe um, in the COVID years, uh, 2020, sort of maybe even 2019, 2021, he wasn't refereeing at his, at his, his best level. I, I don't think he would, I thought he dropped off a little bit for whatever reason. I'm sure there's I'm sure there's extenuating and mitigating reasons for it, and it's not a it's not a criticism of him. But I just think that others had had overtaken him a little bit. But now, absolutely not. I think that he is undisputably um, the best referee in the world, and it's it, it, and he gets his just desserts for that. 